Welcome to this YSL tutorial on Report Builder 2016. This part of the series is going to explain how you can save your reports to a report server. We'll begin the video with a very quick checklist of the bits of software you should have installed and then we'll jump straight in and show you how to access the Report Web Portal application which is the basic standard tool that Microsoft provide for you to view your deployed reports. We'll very quickly generate a simple report that will be even more basic in its formatting than my usual ones and then we'll explain how you can connect to a report server and find the URL of the report server using SQL Server Management Studio. We'll then go through the process of deploying a report which is essentially just saving it to a server location then look at a few of the basic things you can do to view and manage your deployed reports such as moving them around to different folders, deleting them, downloading them and re-uploading them. Let's start with a really quick checklist of the bits of software you should have installed. Obviously you should have a copy of Report Builder installed and as you've reached part 3 of this series and I'm going to assume you've done that already but just in case here's the video that explains how to install Report Builder less than 10 minutes long just in case you need to get up and running quickly with that. Perhaps more importantly for this particular video as it's all about connecting to a report server is you're going to need to have a report server to connect to. Now we set up an, an earlier video series called SQL Server 2016 Getting Started that explains how to install a local instance of SQL Server 2016 and that includes the report server component. So if you haven't already got access to a report server and perhaps the easiest way to follow along with this video is to install a local instance of, of SQL Server on your own machine anyway, we've got a video series that explains how to do that. So part one explains how to install SQL Server along with the report server. Part 2 explains how to install some management tools you're going to need to use to follow along with this video. And then Part 8, you can skip over all the rest unless you're desperately interested, but Part 8 explains how to install the YSL Movies database, which is the database we'll use to explain or create a basic report and create our data source and data set. So as long as you've done all those things, we're ready to get started. Just before we deploy our report to the report server, it's worthwhile having a quick look at the basic tool Microsoft provides for viewing your deployed reports. Now in earlier versions of Report Builder and Reporting Services, this was called the Report Manager application. Microsoft have changed its name now, it's just called the Web Portal. I think they missed a huge opportunity to call it the Reportal, but anyway, that's just me. So the Reportal, or the Web Portal, or the Report Manager, however you like to refer to it, is an application that runs in a web browser. The newer version of Report Builder and Reporting Services 2016 is less fussy about exactly which browser it uses. Older versions used to be quite picky about which particular browser they used. Um, so just to show you how you could find out where to view your report all from or your web portal from, if you've installed your instance of SQL Server as per described in that SQL Server 2016 Getting Started series, you'll have a little tool installed in your machine, or on your machine, I beg your pardon, um, called the Reporting Services Configuration Manager. I've actually created a quick shortcut to mine in the main part of my start menu, but you'll also be able to find it in the main uh, list of all programs under Microsoft SQL Server 2016. There should be in here a Reporting Services Configuration Manager tool. Now if you were to select to run that application, it should first of all ask you to confirm that you want to make changes to the device or allow it to make changes to the device, so click yes to do that. You'll then need to select the specific instance of report server that you want to connect to. So in this case I've got two different instances of SQL Server 2016 installed. So the one I'm going to use for this video is called SQL 2016 Training. So if I select that one from the list and then click connect, we then get access to all the configuration settings for our report server. The only one we're really interested in here right now is the web portal URL. So if I select the web portal URL, that'll give me a quick little link that I can click on to browse to it. So if I do that, as I've already got my default web browser open, it's going to try to connect to the web portal in, in this case, in my case, Google Chrome. Sadly, that provides me with a bit of an error message. Um, I've, I don't currently have permission to view the contents of my report portal homepage. So if I click OK, what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to use a separate web browser just to demonstrate the uh, the, the principles of this video. So I've got the, the URL listed there at the top in the address bar. I'm just going to click there and copy that to the clipboard. To get around that little error message that pops up, you essentially need to run a browser in administrator mode. So to do that, I'm going to head straight back to the start menu. And then I'm going to use Internet Explorer for this. It doesn't really matter what, which browser you use, but if I right click on Internet Explorer and then choose more, and then choose run as administrator. I'll click yes to allow it to make changes to my device and then when it has fired up what I should be able to do is then just click into the address bar, paste in the address that I've just copied, 
hit enter to browse to it, and there we go. I'm currently pointing to the home page of my SQL Server Reporting Services web portal. Now obviously there's nothing much to view here at this point because we haven't yet deployed any reports. So the next job is to create a report that we can deploy. We can do this in a couple of different ways. If you followed along with the previous video and you've already created a basic report, so I've actually got one sitting on my desktop, simple movie report, I could just choose to upload that one. If you haven't, then we can whip up a really quick report. It's not going to look particularly pretty, but then none of my reports really do. So I choose to head to the start menu and open up report builder. And then what I'm going to do when the application finally loads is choose to view, uh, create a blank report. I'm just going to get rid of the title text box at the top by selecting it and hitting the delete key on the keyboard. I'm going to get rid of the execution time text box as well and I'll get rid of the page footer so I can right click into this blank grey area and choose remove page footer. I can then create a quick data source so I'm going to right click data sources and choose add data source. I won't bother changing its name, there's no real point, but I do need to make sure that I'm using an embedded connection. So if I choose embedded connection, it's going to connect to SQL Server. If I click the build button at the right hand side, I can refer to the same server I'm going to deploy my report to. That's not actually important. You can get your data from one server and then deploy it to a different one. That's absolutely fine. Um, but in this case, I'm going to get my data from the same server that I'm deploying to. So that's .sql 2016 training. It's usually better to type that in, sorry, beg pardon, that should be in dot backslash. That's a shortcut to the local machine. Then SQL 2016 training was the instance we've just referred to. And then if I click on the drop down arrow at the bottom, I should be able to select my movies database. Then I can click OK and then OK again. I do this part quite quickly because we've already got a video that explains how to um, how to do the, the, the basic creating reports. It's part two of this series. So I'm going to right click on my data source and then choose add data set. And I'll create a quick simple query just to get some data from the film table. I'll use the query designer to do this just to keep things quick and simple. So if I expand the tables folder and then the film table, I'll have title, release date, runtime in minutes and Oscar wins as well. So having done that I'm going to click OK and then OK again. What I'll then do is insert a basic table into the report so I can right click and choose insert table and then I can assign a few columns to that table so I'll have title, release date, runtime minutes and I'll just drag Oscar wins to the right hand side perfect and then just change the width of the title column and then I'm going to format the release date so it's got a nice sensible date format by right clicking and choosing text box properties. Head to the number tab and choose date and then choose a standard UK format in this case and then click OK. Maybe format the title bar of the table or the header row of the table so if I select the little grey box at the left hand side I can choose to change the background colour and then maybe choose a different font colour, maybe make that bold and then a quick little test, if I run the report at that point, a quick little test, just have a quick look. It doesn't look particularly beautiful, but that's not really that important. The important thing is we've got a whole set of data that we could now choose to deploy to a report server. Now obviously we can choose to save this report locally, although there's no actual need to do that. I am going to do it just quickly just to make sure that if things go wrong I've got something to, uh, to get back to. So I'm going to hit the save button or press Control and S and to begin with I'm just going to save this directly to my desktop and I'm just going to call it, oh, too, well, untitled will do, I don't care about changing the name. I've still got this simple movie report from the previous video in the series so I'm just going to leave that one where it is. I'll call this one untitled and then just click save. Now of course that saves it locally but not to the report server so nobody else can view it unless I sent the file to them of course. What I need to do now at this point then is deploy the report to the report server. To make that work I've got to first of all connect to it. So there's a little button down there at the bottom, sorry a little hyperlink down there at the bottom that says connect. So if I click the connect button um, it will ask me the URL of my report server which I don't currently have so now we need to go away and find that. To find your report server URL, you can use a tool called SQL Server Management Studio. And again, that's another one of those tools that you should hopefully have installed if you were following the um, SQL Server 2016 Getting Started series. That's part two of that series there. So if I head to the Start menu, and I'll need to run this as an, as an administrator again, so I can right-click my SQL Server Management Studio application, and then choose More and choose Run as Administrator. Then I can click Yes, and then a dialog box is going to pop up in a moment asking me what type of server to connect to. So currently it's set to a database engine. What I want to do here is 
refer to a reporting services survey instead. So if I choose reporting services, make sure it's SQL 2016 training, the one that I'm trying to deploy to, and then click connect. When this does finally connect, sometimes it takes a little while, what I'm going to be able to do is access the properties of this server to find the report server URL. And all I'm going to do then is open up the dialog box that will show me the URL and then copy and paste it into my report builder report. Okay, so eventually that's happened and I can now see my report server node sitting in the Object Explorer window on the left hand side. If you can't see the Object Explorer window, just head to the View tab or the View menu and choose Object Explorer. Or just hit the F8 key in fact and that will make it appear too. What I can now do is right click on the top node in this panel and then choose Properties. And then from the dialog box, all I need to do is copy the URL from that text box there or that label. So if I select the text and then right click and choose copy or press Control C, I can OK or cancel the dialog box. I haven't made any changes, so that's fine. Then switch back to my report builder application where this connect to report server dialog is waiting for me. And then just paste in either by right click and paste or Control V to paste. What I can then do is hit the connect button and after a short little while it should tell me that I'm now currently connected to a report server and this gives me a little bit more op uh, options when I choose to save my report. Okay, now that we're actually connected to a report server, the act of saving a file there is pretty straightforward. If I head to the file menu and choose save as, I'll need to choose save as of course. If I click save, that will just save it straight back to the desktop where it's currently sitting. So if I head to the file menu and choose save as instead, on the dialog box that pops up, I'll have access to a link there that says recent sites and servers. So if I select that, it should provide me with the, the, a link to the server that I've just connected to. Now sadly, if I choose to double click to try to connect to this server in this dialog box, I'm going to get an annoying little message that tells me I don't currently have sufficient permissions. Um, this is the same sort of message, or this is the same reason that when we initially tried to browse to the report portal, um, that that failed. And the solution is the same as well, running an application as an administrator. So if I click OK and then cancel out of this dialog box and then just close down Report Builder, what I can then do is head back to the Start menu and I can right click on my report builder application and then I can choose more and then choose run as administrator. If I then click yes to confirm that I want to allow it to make changes to my device and then select the application when it loads, I'll go back to my recent list and then reopen my untitled report which is currently sitting on my desktop. Annoyingly, we've got to connect to the report server again um, but it's slightly quicker to do this time. If I click the connect button, I can simply now select from a drop down list from my recent report servers, so I don't have to copy and paste the URL again. I'll show you a quick way shortly to set that up so it will always connect to a current report server whenever you open up Report Builder. But if I just click Connect at this point, what I can then do, nearly there, head to the file menu, choose Save As, point to Recent Sites and Servers, and then double click my report server. This time, finally, I get access to the report server. So I could just click save at this point, which is save it directly there. Let's just do that right now. If I click save and after it's run through its process, switch back to your web browser in which you were viewing your reports portal. Give that page a quick refresh. And this time you ought to see eventually, there we go, our new report appears with its wonderful title. And I can click on that title just to view the data stored in the report or the, or the data that the report displays. It may take a little while to appear, but there we go. Now that the report has been uploaded, we have several other choices for how we could subsequently open it in Report Builder. If I just switch back to the home page of the report's web portal, um, I could choose to download this report so that I could then have a local copy of it that I could open in Report Builder. So for example, if I browse back to my desktop very quickly, imagine for some ter terrible, horrifying reason, I've accidentally lost my untitled report. Um, it's in my recycle bin, so it doesn't really matter. But imagine that had gone and I wanted to get a copy from the server. If I switch back to my web browser, and then when I can view the report in this view here, I get a little ellipsis button at the top right hand corner, it's dot dot dot. If I click on the dot dot dot, that gives me the option to download the report, not the actual data that it contains, but the report definition file, the RDL file. So if I choose download, I will then get in, um, in Internet Explorer, I get to choose where I want to save it. So let's click on the drop down arrow and choose save as, and I can put this on my desktop. I'll call it untitled. So I can hit save there, 
I just close down that little window and browse back to my desktop. So I've got a local copy of the file now. Of course, in Report Builder, I could just choose to open it up directly from the Report Server. So I switch back to Report Builder and then close down the application entirely. And then back to the Star menu. I'll run it as an administrator again. So I'll right click on it and choose More and Run as Administrator. Click Yes to allow it to make changes. And when it's finally opened, I can, first of all, close down the Getting Started panel and then hit the Connect button so I can connect to my Report Server. And then, when it has done that, I can head back to the file menu and I can choose open and I can browse to my recent sites and servers so I can double click this recent server select my untitled report and the copy that's just been opened up now is the one that's currently saved to the server so for instance if I wanted to make a quick simple change like change the the formatting of the title bar let's do that so let's change it so it's this lovely shade of green instead uh, maybe a black font and then if I were to save that that's saving the copy on the report server. So if I switch back to my web browser so I can see my report web portal, click on the report. When it loads this time, it'll have that lovely green title instead. There are a few other basic things you can do with your report once you're running it from the server. So you can, of course, navigate between the different pages, as you've seen in the report design. You can also choose to print it directly from the report server too. So if I've got a little print button there, I'm not going to do that, um, but that just uses basic standard print options. I could also save it, export it to a different format, so I can click on the little save icon there and export it to a Word, Excel, PowerPoint, etc. That's quite handy. Um, I can also do some basic things to manage the report while it's on the server. If I browse back to the home page of the web portal, you can imagine that if I had hundreds of reports all sitting on this one single page, that becomes slightly unwieldy. So you can perform some basic management tasks like creating folders and assigning reports to folders. To create a new folder, I click the new button up at the top toolbar of the web portal. I can choose to create a new folder. I'll need to give that folder a name. <laughs> There's some slight weird offsetting of the flashing cursor there. I wonder if that's an Internet Explorer issue. Um, let's call this folder basic reports or something like that. At least the text appears in the, the actual text box. I'll spell reports properly eventually. There we go. And then hit create. The, uh, the home page will refresh at that point to show me the new folder that I've just created. And if I wanted to move my untitled report into that basic reports folder, I can click on the ellipsis button again and then choose to move it. I can then select any folder on the on that home page and then click select and that report, if I refresh the page manually this time, that report will now sit inside this basic reports folder. So that's quite neat and tidy and you can imagine that that's a handy thing to do when you have hundreds of reports to upload. So saving reports from Report Builder directly to a report server is pretty straightforward as long as you've connected to the report server. But it's also possible to upload them from the report server web portal. So if I browse back to the web portal application, if I wanted to upload my reports to a specific folder, I browse into that folder first. And then again on the toolbar at the top, there's an option to upload files. So if I choose upload, I then get the option to pick a report. Let's go with my other simple movie report in this example. So that's from a previous video that, in fact, the previous video in this series. So if you have more reports to upload, feel free to test one of those. I can choose to open that one or just double click on it and that will upload it and that should hopefully refresh the folder I'm looking at. So now I've got two reports in this folder. So I can choose simple movie report and that will show me the report that I created in the previous video. It's equally possible to delete reports, so if I head back to the basic reports folder, should I want to delete a single report, that's pretty straightforward, I can just click the ellipsis button and then choose to delete it. And I'll be asked to confirm that of course, so I can click delete and then that report will disappear. I can of course delete entire folders and all of their reports as well. So back into the home page, I can select the folder and then select that and choose delete. So if I click delete, that entire thing will be gone. Now if you wanted to delete a whole bunch of individual reports, then that can get quite tedious. Let me just upload a couple of reports again. I have to do this one at a time, sadly, so let's go for the single movie report. Uh, sorry, simple movie report, beg your pardon. And then let's upload my untitled report again. It doesn't matter if you don't have exactly the same reports here as, as I do. You could have easily created another basic report, or you could just use the one that you've created in the previous video here.
Now imagine I had lots of individual reports to delete um, but there were some that I wanted to keep. It can be really tedious to delete each one individually. So you can change the view of your report to web portal. So rather than looking at it this sort of um, uh, uh, tiled view, if you switch back to the view tool in the toolbar, you can choose to view it as a list instead. And the neat thing about that is that each item then gets a little checkbox next to it. So I can click the checkboxes next to each report that I want to delete and then hit the delete button to delete just the checked ones and that makes life a lot easier. I'll switch back to the tile view using the view button, not that there's anything to view at this point, but view tiles and I'll switch back to the original view of the web portal. Now even though I've just deleted all of the server-based copies of the reports using the reports web portal, I've still got the original copy of the untitled reports open in Report Builder. So this is essentially running off a local cached copy of the report design at this point. If I were to close down Report Builder at this point, I would lose that report entirely. However, if I were to save it first, then because it's saving because saving it saves it in its original location, which in this case was the report server, what I should find if I switch back to Internet Explorer and the web portal now, if I refresh the home page, I ought to end up with a new fresh server copy of the untitled report sitting there. So if you accidentally delete a server based report and you do still have it open in Report Builder, then you do have at least a little safety net to get back to. Now if I were to delete the server copy of the report using the web portal again, so I can click on the ellipsis button and then hit delete and then delete again, and then if I switch back to report builder, and without saving it this time, all I'm going to do is close down that report entirely. So I didn't save it at all at that point. So that should mean if I were to go back to run the report again, or open up report builder again, if I right click on the report builder application and choose more and then run as administrator to make sure that I can connect to the server again, when the report finally opens, or when the tool finally opens, I can head to the recent list. And if I try to open up the server copy of the report, so the one that's stored on the report server, I'll be informed that that can't happen because it doesn't exist. So that's the point at which you've lost the report, unless you kept a local backup copy, which fortunately I did. Okay, so just one last little thing for this video, just a kind of convenience feature more than anything else. You noticed earlier on that when I was opening up Report Builder, I was manually clicking the Connect button to connect to a specific report server. I can equally well disconnect from it by clicking the Disconnect tool. Now, it is possible to connect to the report server without having to click that actual Connect link. If I head to the File menu and I choose to Save As, and then I simply go to Recent Sites and Servers and then double click on it, you'll see that if I were to save that report, I'll see that it's already connected to that report server. It has to be in order to, uh, to save the reports there. So you don't technically need to click connect at all, but some people I know prefer to make sure that Report Builder automatically connects to a report server as soon as the application opens, and you can make that happen. If you switch to the file menu and then choose to look at options of Report Builder, then there's an option in there to say use this report server or SharePoint site by default. So I'd need to know the uh, the URL of the report server, so at this point I'd probably just go back to SQL Server Management Studio and right click that top node and choose properties and then just copy the URL one more time and then cancel from that dialog box, switch back to report builder and then paste that in. If I then click OK and then I were to close down report builder entirely, go back to the style menu and then right click more run as administrator, click yes. What you'll hopefully see this time when the uh, application loads is that it's already automatically connected to that server. If you want to undo that option, that's pretty straightforward as well. You can just head straight to the file menu and then go back to options and then simply take that report server URL away. So you can delete that from the text box, hit OK, then the next time you load the application, just to prove a point, it won't connect to that report server again. So I guess that's kind of a useful option if you're primarily connecting to a single report server. I guess if you're connecting to lots of different report servers, um, it could be more annoying to have to disconnect before connecting to another. So there's the basic idea. Hope you find that one useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time. If you like what you've seen here, why not head over to the YSL website where you can find loads more free resources, including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching. See you next time.